So today, as you can see by the title, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a wig. You all want to know how to make a wig. You all want to buy wigs. I'm going to teach you how to make your own. So we're starting out with the spandex cap. I have it linked down below. It is a dome cap made out of spandex. It fits my head perfect. I have this mannequin head that is very used. Size 21, as you see here. Now, the way I'm showing you now is the way that you put it. Where you see all the glue is where I usually do it. Now I flip it and I do it the short way because my head doesn't have that big hump in the back. So if you have a mannequin head, kind of look at it from the side and see what side looks like my side. Like my size head basically. And I have a peanut head. This is a little bit more of the shape. So I'm going to put it on backwards. Now this is how the hair comes. Again, this is from Zomi Beauty. They sent over four bundles and a frontal of body wave hair. I have this linked down below. This is some amazing hair. It's nice, dark, healthy, beautiful. The frontal is 21 inches. Not sure if they advertise it as pre-plugged, but it is nicely um, like kind of plugged in the front where it kind of helps to start it off for you. I'm going to pluck it um, before I put it on my head. So what you've seen in the beginning is um, me, my customization. You can also bleach the knots. I chose not to, but I am going to put a powder underneath that is going to make it look nice. So placement of the frontal is important. The frontal should align in the front and make an M. So basically you take the tip and kind of pull it a little ways in front. Depending on the size of your head, I feel like my head is somewhat petite. Um, I pull it maybe less than an inch in front. If you have a huge head, you might want to put it on a whole inch, maybe even two. So kind of size it and kind of maybe even like measure from the where you want it to start to the back of your head. And then measure that same amount on the mannequin head and mark it. So you'll know that your um, wig won't be too, you know, little. So T-pins are key. I put a T-pin where I wanted it to go in the front. I kind of turned the, the head around and put a T-pin in the back to secure it. Now you're going to secure the sides. These sides, these little strips that you see in it, um, I believe they're called ribbons. Um, you kind of want them to match up with the spandex dome cap. But because my head is a size 21 um, and I believe across mine is a 11 inch like 11 and a half and this is actually a 13 inch by 4 inch frontal um, I'm basically gonna have to cut off an inch to two inches um, of the frontal in the end so it's gonna hang off just a little bit also look at it like when you look at your wig look at my daughter was messing with me sorry guys for the bumpiness but look at the placement like when you see wherever you see um, your frontal is where it's going to lay on your head. So kind of be mindful. Like is this going to be enough up here? Should I pull it back a little bit more? So now that you have the frontal placed with the T-pins. Secure the rest of the hair so it is not in the way. And now we're going to begin sewing. So I choose to use nylon thread. I like how bouncy and stretchy it is when you pull on it. It has a nice give to it um i feel like it also tangles less than the um thread that i used to use so i'm gonna try and speed up a little bit without speeding up too much i've done these videos where i've showed you how i make my wigs quite a few times and a lot of you did not grasp it some of you even say that i may have um you know sped up a little bit too much so i want to speed up so that we're not here for an hour but i also you know want to be as detailed as i can you just go around and sew. A lot of people will do the loop and pull method with these fancy techniques on how they do it. Literally, if you're a beginner, don't worry about all these techniques. Literally, just sew. Loop it around, pull it, loop it around, pull it. It is recommended that you sew super duper tight and super duper close together. This is tighter, honestly, than I normally do just because I'm on camera trying to finesse y'all or finesse for you guys. But, um... Normally, I just, I kind of space it out just a little bit because I'm not that patient because this honestly took forever. But the point is just to sew it across. Try to sew it, you know, as close as possible together as you can. Once you're done, go ahead and cut off um, that needle. Leave enough thread so that you can double or triple knot it as I did so it will never come apart. And then cut off the excess thread and this is what you are left with. 
So when you sew it, you should have this little McDonald's imp, so to speak. Like the way the flaps lay in the front with the frontal, it should kind of form an M or an upside W, w however you want to say. So this is a hot glue gun method. You can follow the same technique if you're going to sew. The hot glue gun method is just a quicker method. So with my bundles, again, this is body wave hair, um, four bundles, I believe it was 22, 22, a 20 inch bundle, no, 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 I'm sorry, it was 24, 24, a 22 and a 20 inch bundle. So today we're going to use three of these bundles. Look how amazing that luster, that bounce, that body wave. It's so gorgeous. We're going to use a 24, a 24, and the 22 inch bundle. So when we are done, we're going to have one extra bundle left. You only need three bundles in a frontal for this look if you're purchasing. Um, but the fourth bundle kind of is a safety net just in case. You never want to run out of here when you're making a wig. That is like the worst feeling ever. So some people choose not to um, actually put the tracks on that band. You guys can see about a half an inch of band right there. A lot of people will not. Um, for a long time I didn't because I, I was told, you know, it's not going to make your wig fit and this and that. For me, the wig is going to fit perfectly fine with me going on top of the band with the hot glue. Um, so it's all about preference. Now the first track, I measured it, I cut the track, and then I glued it. This time around, I'm going to show you a second technique. I'm going to just go ahead and apply the glue, lay down the track. I usually apply the glue about halfway, lay down the other half, and lay it down. And this time, I did not pre-cut the track, so I basically laid the track down without cutting it, and I cut it at the end. This is the most accurate way so that you don't... Um, cut too much or too little hair when you pre-cut the track. Sometimes when you pre-cut the track, you'll cut too much or cut too little so it might be too long or too short and you'll see exactly what I mean. You just see me kind of pulling some white stuff off. Sometimes, a lot of times, you will get glue. Oh, and here's another thing. I have so many tips for you guys. After you cut it, kind of pull on the ends downwards to kind of pull out that excess hair because when you cut your tracks, think about if you cut your jeans. If you cut a pair of jeans, they're going to eventually shred and a lot of the fabric is going to pull off. When you cut your tracks, hair is going to pull off the ends because it's no longer like sewn to the end to keep it from shedding. So kind of pull and tug on the ends after you cut it to kind of pull off that excess. And this is going to avoid having so much hair shed um, in the end once the wig is done. Also, I was saying, you see me pulling up the white stuff, the glue does dry. Sometimes it gets in the hair. Don't be nervous. Just go ahead and allow it to dry and leave it alone and come back later, like when you're done with the wig. And once it's dry, it's going to come off super easy. Some pieces may come or be a little bit tougher to get off. But ultimately, if you really want, you know, the glue to come off, they get off. Now, you see I'm cutting. This is a piece where I actually... Um, pre-cut the tracks too long so I'm just going back for that last two rows and just cutting off that excess so that the track does not overlap the lace now you can see this is where we've made progress your mannequin head will move a ton it's pretty annoying but I honestly have not found a tripod that does not move you just got to go with it so again, I'm pre-cutting. Honestly, I don't have a preference. I do both and I go back and forth. This process takes me about 30 minutes. Like once the frontal is sewn down, the actual process of laying the tracks usually takes me about half an hour. Like if the kids are asleep, I'm in my zone, got a you know Netflix and chill by myself going on. I can get this done in about half an hour. For the sake of this video, of course, I went a little bit slower, so it probably took me about two hours. Not even going to lie. How I use the back of my nail to kind of press the hair through the glue onto the cap to make sure that it's down and it's secure. I use the back of my nail because this glue is extremely hot, and I want to make sure that I don't burn myself. Um, I've done probably over 100 wigs with this technique, and I'm sure I've burnt myself a million and one times. Um, so that never gets old, but you know, just be careful. I've burned my thigh before, right before I had my daughter and it literally scabbed up. But this is what one track, or I'm sorry, one bundle looks like. It is absolutely full 
beautiful stunning amazing waves and it took me almost about half of the way so uh, one bundle got me super far but you're gonna see in this last little space I'm gonna use a whole nother two bundles honestly if I really wanted to fit all four bundles in there I definitely could have but I just you'll see in the end and I'm pretty sure you said at the end the wig that I made is extremely full it is nice full um, definitely not going for a natural look if you want a natural look try to opt for about two bundles if you want it full how I have my hair this was a full three bundles and if you want it like super duper Beyonce performance hair get all four bundles in and you'll be able to do it just glue them super close together so measure out how much you need cut the track apply the glue to the lace you do want to put a generous amount you don't want it a super thin line but you don't also want to cake it on glue does dry fast so like I said before I'll apply glue about half of the way apply the track and then apply more glue and then apply the rest of the track because sometimes when you try to glue all the way around when it's like going the long way um, the glue will start to dry because it does dry really quick Make sure the end pieces of all of your tracks are secure because if a track comes up, it's going to come up obviously starting from the end. Also make sure that your tracks are not overlapping. If you made the track a little bit too long, once you glue it down so, or cut off that end piece to make sure it's not overlapping for a bulky, you know, messy look. So here's the third and final bundle that we're going to be using today. I've already put down two 24s. This is a 22 inch bundle and then the frontal is 20 inches so it's going to lay and flow really really nice with some very natural layers and you can also customize it and add more layers once your wig is done. So we're finally in the home stretch. It feels like when I get to this point it's never ending it's like walking in sand where you feel like you've been walking forever and you're not getting closer to your destination but we're almost there now the more you get to the top the more you know kind of neat you want to be with your bundles and your glue because if any part of the wig is going to show it's about this area here that's going to show so you know just be careful if you do get glue, make sure you pull it up. Once you're done, you can use a black hairspray to go ahead and spray it in the areas where there's like a lot of white glue to kind of camouflage it so that it won't be noticeable. Yeah, I think we have one more track here. Now you don't want your tracks to overlump or, or overlap and be lumpy. So we're right here we have like two tracks left. Decide if you want to put one or two. I kind of took a risk and put an extra one right there. Make sure that that first track where the lace frontal meets is super close because you don't want a gap between the lace and the frontal. I'm sorry, the frontal and the bundles. So the hair is absolutely gorgeous. After I've completed my wig, I like to take a big wig brush and just brush it out for dear life. I don't want my wig shedding all over the place. And I also want to get out that excess glue. So what you see in my hand was excess hair, um, excess glue that dried around the hair. Again, when you pull it out after it's dried, it comes out super easy. And this is what the wig looks like. Now this wig was made for me my head is, again is a size 21 and this is gonna lay super flat it is body wave hair so it is a little bit lumpy looking at it but if I wet it super good right now or brush it really really good you would see how flat and amazing this wig look even though it was made with glue so we're not done yet our next step is going to be to remove the t-pins from the front and cut off all of the dome cap that fits or lays underneath where the frontal is. If you leave this, it is going to look a absolute hot mess. You cannot leave this piece of cap under there or you won't be able to utilize the lace for what it's for. And you're also going to have this thick piece of elastic across your hairline, so it's going to be lumpy. We're not going to throw that piece of elastic away as you see I clean it up and cut around it because I'm going to actually use this as the elastic that is going to be or work for my elastic band method to make my wig fit super duper tight along the hairline so this was the end result I saved that last bundle I also saved that elastic band and this is the mess of what was left from the bundles on the floor 
off camera I went ahead and cut the lace around my ear you literally want to cut it around your ear so that it frames I also left a ton of sideburns to show you if you really like the light the sideburn look you can leave the sideburn and just cut behind and just literally cut around your ear it's as simple as that use bobby pins or hair clips I'm sorry to move that piece out of the way that way if you want to like got to be glue or ghost bonded you can make that sideburn look obviously that is a lot of sideburns but I just wanted to show you guys I'm not going to use them today but just showing you guys and if you don't want to use that cut that part off along with the you know lace around your ear so I went ahead and measured that piece of elastic that we cut off from our mesh dome cap to fit perfectly from ear to ear behind. And now off camera I made the elastic band. I tweezed the hairline just a little bit more. I swooped my baby hair using got to be glued. Um, I honestly didn't do anything to the top. I just went ahead and pulled it back and put it in the half up half down situation. But I didn't even try. I haven't done anything to the remainder of the hair and look how gorgeous this looks the wig doesn't move i also added a little bit of powder underneath the lace so kind of when it moves and you see scalp you it kind of looks like my skin complexion as you see here and i didn't even bleach the knot so that's what adding powder to so I really liked what it looked like as a side part, but the hair is so full that I kind of felt like it was going to be in my face and I just wasn't in the mood for it on this day. So I went ahead and did my go-to, which is the center part. I add mousse to the crown and then I kind of seal it in with the flat iron, which is warming up at the moment. And this is going to make for a more salon look. I'm going to go over the parting with powder. I should have went over the baby hair with powder. I did that off camera beforehand, but it kind of is rubbed off because it's been a while. Now you want to brush the frontal or the lace, the hair on the lace frontal to go kind of backwards to make sure that it's covering that line of demarcation where your bundles or your tracks and your frontal meet. You never want to be able to see that from any angle. Now this looks amazing to me. Like if I had bleached the knots, this would be a perfect 10. The hair itself is so full. You guys can see this is three bundles and a frontal. And look how amazingly full it is. Again, this is body wave texture. I believe that because it's so full, if you really, really, really want it to be super duper 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 like body wave, I would recommend co-washing it and deep conditioning it or using a diffuser because again, this hair is so long that... Um, I won't say it's heavy, it's just nice and full. So I like the natural wave that it gave. And again, I use that Cantu. They have a new one. I used to, I grew up using this Cantu leave-in conditioner, but this is like a new and improved one that has argan oil. And you can see here where you have that line of demarcation and there's tons of glue right there. I'll go back later and pull some of that glue out and I'll also add a black hairspray so you won't be able to see it as I said before. Um, but yeah. Water is your best friend when you have body wave hair. Water is your best friend. So now I'm going to give you my final thoughts on the hair. And here we go. So as you guys can see, the wig came out amazing. Also, you guys can see my braids under here need to be redone so they're not super flat. But you guys can see if my braids were done flat as they should, this wig is super flat. The band actually fits the back of my head and it's not too loose. Everything all around fits my head super perfect because I know sometimes we have issues when we make our wigs and the wig does not come out to fit our head perfectly. I did use my mannequin head that is 21 inches. Um, I know with my videos I like to do speed ups and voiceovers and sometimes when I edit because I know what's going on, I am a little bit more biased I guess and I speed up sometimes a little bit too fast not to bore you guys but lately I've been getting a response of a lot of people not a lot of people but just a few people have been saying they're a little bit too fast so hopefully with this tutorial I was able to explain everything and as go as slow as possible um, so that everybody can grasp the concept of how to make a wig. If you still have questions, I will continue to do these videos until you all get it and you all know how to make a wig because it's actually not as hard as it seems. The key to it is to get a mannequin head that is the size of your head, measure, make sure your cap and everything is perfect for your head so that the wig fits like a glove. And then everything else is extra. Also, it is a bonus to have amazing hair to work with. 
I absolutely loved the hairline on this one. I did lightly tweeze a little bit more and I again I can still go back even more um, and tweeze even more if I wanted to but this was good enough for me. Swooped a little baby hair all around and then I styled the remainder of the hair on camera. So pretty much was super self-explanatory. The hair, the hair itself is some beautiful body weight hair. Um, everything is nice. The actual bundle um, held up really nice, had a good texture to it. I don't want to take the tag off, but you know, it was nice and healthy. It's nice and healthy, healthy hair, super dark, healthy bundle, has no smell, good or bad. Yeah, and I'm happy with it. So if you are interested, check out Zomi Beauty. I really hope that I'm pronouncing this right because Looks like Zomi, really like the way it's pronounced. I probably would name my daughter Zomi if I had um, Z names going with my kids. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Zomi Beauty. Have all the details on this hair in the description bar as well as a list of things that I used. And as always, I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace.